I was doing some work uh, up in the Kalahari for another researcher and um, while I was doing that work it was raised that Prosopis was impacting local livelihoods. Um, our study took place primarily in the Northern Cape but also a little bit in the Western Cape. That's where the species is most widespread. I did some interviews with farmers and local community members to understand what they believe about the tree and their perceptions and knowledge about it, um, particularly about how, in, how invasions are spreading and, and also about the impacts and benefits that they feel these invasions have. We understood from other studies that it has negative effects on biodiversity, so it, it decreases populations of birds, insects, other trees, but then it also has major impacts for humans because it's, it's got the deepest root in, in the world out of any tree, so it's, uh, it's, its tap roots goes into the, the water supply and then the Northern Cape doesn't get much rain, so most water comes from underground boreholes. In die, hij groeit in die boorgaard in en dan loopt hij even zo om die pijpen. Dan maak hij zo een, een bos daar. Het also has all sorts of other implication, negative implications. For example, it really reduces um, grazing, grazing potential. So, although it provides a, f a fodder and that's highly nutritious, it's only around for a month or two in the dry season of the year. And that means it's displacing um, herbaceous plants and grasses that could be grazed throughout the year. The last estimates were about 1.8 million hectares of South Africa covered. Um, but we suggest looking at annual rates of spread at about 8%. We think now, well, if we had to update those figures, it's probably about 8 million hectares now. But in the, the mid-1900s, um, there were major droughts up in the arid areas of South Africa. So the Department of Agriculture really promoted um, the introduction of this tree onto farms. So they literally gave trees to farmers and said, go and plant one of these trees in each corner of your of your land because it's going to provide fodder for your livestock and shade for them and then also fuel wood. And a couple of years after that they started becoming invasive. It wasn't intention, they didn't realize it was going to be a problem. So we, f we had a focus on, on how it impacts trees and then also how it in impacts local communities. Um, and then we also to take it further to understand it's it's because I suggest, mentioned earlier that it's it's got conflicts of interest because it provides beneficial fodder and firewood um, and also shade and, and beautification in urban areas, um, but then obviously it, it, raises, it also induces costs. Um, so we, we looked at how much people actually use the tree relative to others um, to get kind of a bit of a cost-benefit understanding of the tree. We started working a lot to understand what's hindering management and we worked with different stakeholders, um, mainly working for water, so we, look, um, in, we worked with managers and labourers but also farmers and academics and it was quite surprising that there was a list of over 100 problems. Some of the interesting ones were obviously the conflicts of interest that are still there. Um, many farmers were talking about how they manage it and they don't want it there but their neighbour still uses it for fodder and won't manage it. So there's these these interesting um, dynamics. I think the more people see now always the pillar as a positive, omdat that the state the regering aanbeveel is om prosopus aan te plant voor droog te weiden. Voor die pillar in as daarni as het een tijd van droogte, dan kreeg ik prosopus ook zwaar in die pilletjes als maar klein in man en zo. Dat is ook die droogte voelen. Looking at it from an invasion 
biology point of view, there's a lot of vectors of spread. So there's a lot of ways this tree is spreading, making it difficult to manage. So every flood event takes seeds downriver and causes new invasions. In transporting livestock, um, they in the dung, their seeds, and so they're along all major transport routes. How come it's so over spreading that the donkeys eat that pulla? And now the donkeys go and loop in the field and they miss them most now. And they put the the lane or the arms in miss. And as that rains, they come they boom so much so fast they miss them. Come and so much so up. What my matter is the nature of the earth is what the forefathers did. In doing these studies, we've we've really found that people think this tree is harmful, um, they would like to see densities decreased, um, and it's having a negative impact on their lives. So um, uh, you, looking into this, it's enabled us to um, develop management strategies, but also propose things like introducing further biological control to aid the, 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 uh, the management of this tree in a more cost-effective manner.